So today we have a captive air system that's been giving us a problem. Um, we had some motor starters fail, they had an electrical issue, and we bypassed them temporarily. That's why you see all these wire nuts. So we're gonna get in here and replace these motor starters today, and then hopefully uh, also gonna make some adjustments to the exhaust fans and speed them up a little bit. Okay, so we've got the new motor starters installed. We're using this one as a contactor because they're just running two single legs through there. And then the rest are used as actual motor starters that monitor the current running through the wires and you know turn them off if there's an overload situation. What I want to point out is I have no power control voltage or high voltage in the system right now. And what I did was I tripped all the motor starters. If you don't know how to do that, you hold down the stop button, okay, on this particular motor starter, and then right in this little gray spot right here, when you hold down the stop button, you, you flip the little thing over and it'll say T. So now it's tripped, okay? So that way I can turn them on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with max amperage also so I don't have a nuisance trip when I start these up. And then we'll adjust the amperage as we go. We're also gonna speed these things up, so. So that's where we're at. So now we're gonna turn on main power and control voltage and then turn them on one at a time and monitor them. Okay, so we've got everything running now. We did it one at a time. I had a tech on the roof and we powered them up, checked rotation and checked amp draw. We still have the overload settings maxed out because we are gonna be adjusting airflow on these exhaust fans too because they need some more pull. So what I did was I got a baseline of the amp, raw, uh, amp draw right now and then we're gonna go out and adjust the, um, the sheaves or the motor pulleys and speed the exhaust fans up and we're looking to see these amperages increase and not go over the maximum motor amps. So we're all finished up, I labeled everything and we set the amperage on the motor starter so everything's looking good. We're gonna go ahead and close everything up and we did speed things up so we're gonna uh, come to a follow up and make sure that you know in a couple days that they're smoke or that they're happy with the smoke pole and everything so looking good so far. So this is the aftermath. I don't know what happened but we had like a massive electrical surge or something It blew this starter apart. We had bypassed them a couple weeks ago, so this was just a process of getting all the parts and getting time to come out here. But we're good to go now. Okay, welcome to Fabulous California. We have an earthquake shutoff gas valve on this building. So I was doing work on a makeup air unit. We, uh, we were up here and we probably hit this line when we were walking around up here, which is, you know, expected. That's the main gas line going into this restaurant. Okay, what happened uh, then all of a sudden as we're getting ready to leave glad this happened when I was here They said all of a sudden they don't have any gas to the building and someone mentioned that they had earthquake safety valves That's this chingus right here Okay Right on this chingus is a, re a reset button it Says reset right here. I turned it all the way to the right and all of a sudden you heard the gas actuate through so this thing is a vibration sensitive shutoff valve and you know this has nothing to do with me because I don't deal with gas, but obviously, you know, it happened while we were here, so we had to know how to reset it. All right, so this was a return visit to replace some motor starters. Uh, previous, about a week prior to this video, we had a motor starter short out. Um, we bypassed it temporarily. We actually had two of them short out. We bypassed them temporarily. And uh, once I got the approvals to replace them, we came back out. What we did was we went ahead and shut down everything, control voltage and high voltage to the system, replaced the motor starters, we maxed out the amperage settings, then we turned on the exhaust fans, let the system stabilize out, then we set the amperage settings on the motor starters, okay? We also sped up the exhaust fans, so we had to do a minor building balance by adjusting the makeup air also to compensate for speeding up the exhaust fan. And then finally at the end of the video was when I ran into the nightmare of the gas line uh, earthquake valve that had shut off the gas to the building. Uh, if you follow my social media, you may have already seen me post about it, but we were just getting ready to walk out the door and the customer brought to my attention. They had already started cooking and they had the restaurant open and then all of a sudden everything shut off. Uh, we still had a guy on the roof and more than likely just us walking around on the roof uh, triggered their vibration sensitive earthquake shutoff valve, which I still think there's something wrong with that valve. But I was able to, after talking to the customer, I didn't even know that thing existed, but I went onto the roof to kind of investigate. The customer mentioned to me something about an earthquake safety device. 
And I just started looking and I found that earthquake safety valve and uh, I noticed that it said reset. So I reset it. And the important thing is, is when I reset it, I heard the gas go through it. I heard it whoosh as it went through, but then it stopped. And that's important because the customer had shut off everything downstairs. I specifically asked them shut off every gas appliance. When I heard that sound of the whooshing gas going through the valve, then when I heard it stop, that was comforting because... Um, those valves can also, uh, some of them, I don't really know if that particular one does it or not, but I do know that some of those valves can shut down on a, a high flow incident, basically. So what happens if you had a, a severed gas line in the attic or something like that? Um, potentially, some of those valves could shut off because of that also, so not just because of an earthquake, okay? So by me hearing the gas shut off, that comforted me to know that there wasn't some major giant leak or something like that. So then I had the customer go ahead and turn everything on, light all their pilots, and everything was good after that moment. Um, I also instructed the customer to go ahead and call the utility out to have them inspect that uh, device because I honestly don't think it should have triggered that easily. Um, that gas line is huge. And I, I, I mean, I think you should have been able to run a car into that gas line before that thing triggered. But, you know, I'm not the utility technician, so I really don't understand how those things work properly. Um, I would also say, too, if you guys notice in the video, that's like a hideous install on that whole entire gas line. I just think it's kind of silly that there's no upper supports on something that big on the gas lines. And then also the way that they use the, the Unistrut channel to kind of support the gas meter, that just didn't seem very safe and very sturdy. Anyways, I highly suggest you guys uh, consider checking out some of the channels that are popping up right now. Uh, I want to say thank you guys very much for watching my video. And if you guys haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, thanks a lot. And I will see you guys on the next one.